Okay then my friends, so what I'd like to do now is make a new page which is going to have a form on it that we can use then to add new tickets. So first of all, let's make that page and I want it to have the route forward slash tickets forward slash create. So to do that, we need to make a new folder called create inside the tickets folder. And then inside that create folder, we need to make a new page.jsx file for the page content, right? Now inside here, we can just boilerplate a new React component and I'm going to call it create form. Now, before we write any templates, I just want to think back to the discussion we had about server components and client components. And remember, both types of components are rendered on the server. However, clients components are also hydrated in the browser to add in any interactivity, whereas server components aren't. So we said that where there's no kind of local state or interactivity, we would use a server component because it doesn't need that hydration. But when we did need local state or interactivity, then we should use a client component because it would need to be hydrated in the browser. Now, this page that we're making will have interactivity and some local state to keep track of what a user types into the form fields. So in this case, the page component needs to be a client component. And remember, all components inside this app folder are server components by default, but we can override that by adding at the top of the file in double quotes, use client. And that tells Next.js that this is a client component and it needs hydrating in the browser with some JavaScript. And that's all we need to do. Now we can just carry on as normal and make this component as we normally would do. Now, actually, before we create this form, I think what I'd like to do instead is rename this page to create tickets and then create another component called create form.jsx. And I think I'd like to create the form inside this component and make this be the client components. And then this can remain as a server component. So the page is a server component and we can nest the create form client component inside a server component. We can do that. And the reason I'm doing this is because we might have other content on this page in the future that's not part of the form. And that doesn't necessarily need to be inside the client component because Remember when we looked at that diagram on the next documentation near the start of the series, it was basically saying, try and make as many things as possible a server component and then just sprinkle in the client components where they're needed. So it's only the form itself that needs to be a client component and other things on here in the future, a title, a little nav bar, other information, doesn't need to be in that client component. Does that make sense? So let me save this. Let me go over here and say at the top, use client because this is the client component. I'm also going to boilerplate this component as well. And inside here, we can make now the form. So let me save that first of all and go and nest it over here. We'll have a main tag right here. And inside that, we'll do an H2 that says text hyphen primary and also text hyphen oops dot text hyphen center. They're the classes I'm applying. And this will say add a new ticket. And then below that, we can have the create form and make sure you import that at the top like so. Okay. So now this is the server component still, and this is the client component. All right. So let's flesh out this form. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do inside here is to just import a couple of things. So I'm going to import use router from next forward slash navigation. And the reason I'm importing that is because later on, after we submit the form, we're going to use the use router hook to redirect the user to the tickets page. And also I'm importing use state because I want a little bit of state for the different fields that a user is going to input. So the title, the body and the priority of the ticket. So next I'm going to paste in that little bit of state down here. So we have the title and set title, and that's equal to use state. The initial value is an empty string, body and set body, empty string to begin with, priority and set priority, and the default value of that is low, but I'm going to make a select field, which allows you to choose low, medium, or high as well. And then we have this is loading property and set is loading, and that's set to false. The idea being when we submit the form, I'm going to change this to true so we can show some kind of loading state in the button or something. Now I'm also going to 
use const router is equal to use router up here as well. So we're basically using this hook so that we have um, an instance of the router that we can use later on to redirect the user. Okay, so now let's create the form itself. So down here, I will create the form tag. We don't need the action just yet. We'll come back to the unsubmit handler later on. And in fact, what I'll do is apply a class to this. So class name is equal to, and it will be width hyphen one half. So that means use half the width of the page and apply it to this form. And that's the Tailwind class. All right, so inside here, we need a few different um, input fields. So what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste this from my repo because I think it would be better than you watching me type this out from scratch, but I will go through all of this. It's very simple React stuff. So we have the first one right here. We have a label wrapping the entire thing. Inside the label text is title. And then we have an input field, which is required. The type is text. On change, we fire a function and call set title. And we set the value of that to e.target, which is this input dot value. So whatever they've typed in, it then becomes that part of the state up here. Okay, so we're tracking what they're typing. And also for the two-way data binding, the value of this is equal to the title. Okay, so that's for the title. The next one down here, oops, that needs to say body. That's for the body of the ticket, this time using the text area. Again, required on change. This time we use set body to update the value of the state and the value is equal to body as well. And then finally, we have a select right here for the priority. On change, we call set priority this time. And the default value of this is, remember, low up here. Then we have three options, one for low, one for medium, one for high. So they're the three different fields we need. We also need now a button to submit this form. So let's create that a button like so. And I'm gonna give this a few props. So let's do it on different lines. So class name is gonna be equal to btn primary. So btn hyphen primary. And then I also want a disabled property and that's gonna be equal to is loading. So when we set that equal to true and we've already submit the form, we don't want them to keep on clicking the button and basically spamming it. So we'll disable the button while is loading is true after they've clicked it once. All right, so inside this button, I want to output conditionally two different things. Either add ticket if is loading is false, so they've not submitted yet, or when is loading is true and we're trying to do something in the background to add that ticket, I want to change the text to adding dot dot dot. So let us do that conditionally here, curly braces, and we'll say is loading and then double ampersand and then output a span if that is true, which says adding dot dot dot. So if is loading is true, we output this text. Let's do a different one. So if not is loading this time, double ampersand, then a span if we can spell it, and then we'll say add ticket. So until we've submitted, it shows this. Once we have submitted and we're loading, then we show this. All right, and I think that's pretty much it. So what we can do for now is view this in a browser just to see what it looks like. All right, so at this address, forward slash tickets, forward slash create, we can now see the form. Obviously, if we try to submit something at the minute, then it's not gonna do anything. Well, it will, it will refresh the page because that's the default behavior of forms. However, we're not actually adding any data anywhere. We need a function now to handle the submission of this form. So let's create a function now to handle the submission of this form. So we'll say const and we'll call this handle submit and we're gonna set it equal to an asynchronous function. And inside here, we want to basically send a post request to JSON placeholder, not JSON placeholder, sorry, to JSON server to add some more data. Now, inside here, we get access to the event object and we need that because I want to use e.prevent default, first of all, to prevent the default action of a form, which is to refresh the page. So make sure you spell that correctly, prevent default. The next thing I want to do is set is loading to be true because after they submit the form, I want that to be true so they can't keep clicking the button and also so we see this text instead of this. So let us say set is loading and give that a true value. 
All right, so let's create an object to represent the new ticket that we want to submit. So I'm going to say const ticket is equal to an object and the title is going to be the title up here. So we don't need to do anything else. We can just say title, same for the body and same for the priority like so. And then finally, we want a user underscore email and we need to hard code that at the minute because we don't have any kind of authentication or dynamic value for this. So we'll just send it to be a string, which is Mario at netninja.dev. All right. So sure, now we have that ticket. We can send a post request to JSON server to add that new data to this file over here. Okay. So let's do that. I'm going to say const response is equal to await fetch. And then the endpoint we can get from the terminal. Let's open that up and scroll right up here to where they gave us the endpoint. Where is it? There it is. All right, copy that and paste it right in here. Okay. And then we also need to pass in a second argument, which is an object. And right here, we can say the method of this is going to be a post request. Then we want to specify the headers. And the headers is going to be an object where we say the content hyphen type is application forward slash JSON. So we're basically saying the data that we're sending with this is going to be JSON. And then after that, we need to send the body, which is the data we want to actually add to the file. So we can stringify that by saying JSON.stringify and then pass in, oops, spell it right, stringify, pass in the ticket object. And that's all we need to do. That's going to send a post request and add this new ticket object to this db.json file. Okay, so after that, I want to check the response status. And then if we get a good status, so 201, which means resource added, then I want to basically redirect the user to the tickets page. So I can say if response.status is equal to 201, then do something. And I will take the router which we have because we use the use router hook right here, dot push, and then I'm going to push to the tickets page. Now there's going to be a problem with this, which we'll see shortly, but for now, let's register this handle submit function with this form. So I'm going to say on submit is equal to handle submit like so. All right, so let's give this a whirl in the browser. All right, so I'm on the create page. I'm gonna add a new ticket. So I'll say my new ticket and then down here, blah, blah, blah for the body. And then for the priority, we'll say high priority, add the ticket. All right, that worked, we got the loading state, but we don't see it right here. If we refresh, then we should see it, but we don't see it to begin with. Now, why is that? Well, it's because we're still using that cached version of the tickets data, even though we said we don't want to cache it, we're not actually sending a new request to the server for that page because it's being done browser side. So we're seeing the cached version of the page in essence. So what we need to do is tell the application to basically in the background, refetch this page with the new data. So let's go and try and do that. So what we could do right here, where we redirect the user to forward slash tickets is just before that, say so router and then do a refresh. And what that's going to do is tell the React router to request the route in the background and refetch any data that we need. And then when we get to the tickets page, it's going to have that fresh data. So let's save this and then try it out. All right, so I'm back on the create page and this time I'm going to say another new ticket. Oops, ticket. And then down here, blah, blah, blah. And then this is going to be low priority, add the ticket. And hopefully this time when we get to the tickets page, we're going to be able to see that new ticket. There we go. Another new ticket, low priority right there. So that's work now. 